There is a land, a land beginning with majestic mountains that sweep down over lush green plains, through cascading waterfalls, deep valleys and vast dams. A land where game reserves teem with wildlife and the warm Indian Ocean, filled with colorful marine life, laps onto beautiful beaches. In the heart is a rainbow nation of culturally diverse, vibrant people, where world-class infrastructure, ports and cosmopolitan cities are a gateway to Africa and the world. Guazulu Natal, our kingdom is your stage. In 2016, Guazulu Natal will celebrate 100 years of filmmaking with over 144 films or parts thereof having been filmed in the province. Guazulu Natal has locations. No doubt about that. It's a case of location, location, location. We uh, certainly have a very international look and feel about our province. We've got the scenery, we've got the weather, we've got everything. There's so much that we've got to offer, all within a sort of, you know, a hundred kilometer radius. We've got the beautiful, beautiful coastline, the lush green hills, the jungles. Uh, you can't beat it. KZN has got locations for Africa. Between 1916 and 1938, leading up to the Second World War, a number of films were produced by African Film Productions. Filmed in black and white, most films were silent and based on authors such as H. Ryder Haggard and F. Horace Rose. The early cinema in, in, in South Africa, KwaZulu Natal and Peter Maritzburg plays quite a role. Um, and that's largely because of F. Horace Rose who was the editor of the Natal Witness from 1904 to 1925. So somehow he got involved with the African film productions that was based in Johannesburg. He wrote the scripts for about four films, but the best known one is probably Symbol of Sacrifice, set in the Anglo-Zulu War. And African film productions came down here to shoot scenes here, quite a lot of which were shot around Peter Maritzburg. The magnitude of the symbol of sacrifice is that it featured scenes with 25,000 extras as well as the funeral procession of the French Prince Imperial Louis Napoleon. The other film that um, he was involved with is quite well known as Voice of the Waters and that was shot just outside Maritzburg in the little town of Howick by Howick Falls. By now, international production companies began to recognize the value of Guazulu Natal as a location for filming. In 1936, a film unit did come here and shot the um, first sound version of King Solomon's Mines, which curiously was part musical. And the star was Paul Robeson, the African-American pioneer of civil rights and as well as being a famous singer. These scenes, which were a major scenes in the film, the climactic battle was shot just outside Maritzburg in Otto's Bluff. But also there's the scenic shots of the doubles wandering through the Druckensburg and much is made of the sort of Druckensburg scenery and against this backdrop um, it's back projected with Paul, Paul Robeson singing the song Mighty Mountain. So the Druckensburg is very much a feature of, of the film and clearly what drew the, the um, filmmakers here. A climate that is conducive to shoots for most of the year. We've got an ocean that you can swim in. We've got the best weather, KZN, all year round. It's warm, it's summer. Post Second World War marked an accelerated growth in the production of large scale, big budget international films. The first sort of major production is probably the Zoltan Korda directed version of Cry the Beloved Country. Alan Payton's book had been a huge bestseller internationally and so it was a natural that a film would follow. And they stuck to the locations that are used in the book. So to Okopo, which is where the book begins, came the stars of the film, Canada Lee, and uh, 
at that stage a not particularly well-known Sidney Poitier. The biggest international film, it's only the most famous shot in Croix Zulu Tal, and still famous today, is the film Zulu, starring Stanley Baker and Michael Caine. Zulu was notable for featuring one of the film performances as an actor of Chief Mangasuta Brutal Aid. The film proved a huge, huge success both critically and financially and to this day it's shown at least once a year on British television and thanks to that it seeds a new interest in the Anglo-Zulu war and that in turn seeds an interest in tourism in South Africa. Officer commanding, Rock's Drift. The next big sort of international co-production that was done here was um, Zulu Dawn. A group of people got the money together to do Zulu Dawn and they came to South Africa and they came to Peter Maritzburg which was used extensively during the, certainly the opening sequences of the film. For the battle scenes they moved to Babanango in Zululand. They also used the Buffalo River, the Mzunyati River at, uh, near Rorks Drift for a river crossing scene. One of the other interesting um, facets of Zulu Dawn is the very large international cast that came here, and which famously included Peter O'Toole as, as Lord Chelmsford and Bert Lancaster as Colonel Durnford. It was very much his presence, along with Bert Lancaster, that probably bankrolled the film and gave it the sort of marquee billing that it, that it had. Yeah! 